So recently we unboxed and lightly tested out the AMD RX 6500 XT, costing around $300 in the US. This is basically the only graphics card out there that can be bought in new condition and at near MSRP. We had some really good first impressions on our first video, but how's that holding up? We're not expecting much from this graphics card, but we'll be testing some more games in this video. But first, the PC we'll be using has a Ryzen 5 5600G processor, a Gigabyte B550 DS3HAC motherboard, 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance RAM, 1 terabyte of SK Hynix Gold P31 M.2 SSD, and of course the AMD RX 6500 XT. Now just to quickly recap our first unboxing video for this graphics card, we were able to play GTA 5 in 1440p at very high settings and Ghost Recon Wildlands at full HD and very high settings. We did bring down a couple of FPS killing settings like grass quality, reflections, shadows, and a couple other ones, and those games still looked nice and ran at over 6 60 FPS easily. Link to that video will be down in the description. So we're gonna hop into the gameplay first and then we'll check out the hardware, temperatures, and test its overclocking capabilities. So let's start off with the fan favorite, Fortnite. Running at full HD, epic settings. Ah, well, it was very choppy, just not smooth in general. If you get some action, prepare to lose the fight because it may be smooth at times, you know, just running around. But once you find somebody else in the map, it is going to get a little bit choppy. Then I lowered the settings to high and it was around 60 FPS, definitely playable with no action. Sometimes it would rise to the high 60s, but then it would also dip to the mid to low 50s. You know, it's very inconsistent. You can mix between medium and high to find a good balance, and the game will still look good and it'll be enjoyable to play. However, I really thought this card would have been capable of some high and even epic settings, but so far it's not. Maybe if you're rocking a CPU and motherboard with PCIe 4.0, you may get a boost, but I doubt it'll be enough to run Fortnite at epic settings. Oh, and I just remembered that on my unboxing video, I had said that when I was playing Ghost Recon Wildlands, I said that this card was performing similarly to my GTX 1070. Well, I've I've already changed my mind. The 1070 is able to run Fortnite in 4K with no issues. Obviously they're way different cards, but yeah, I think that test was probably a fluke. The second game we're testing is Apex Legends. I've probably only played this game once and it was testing a different system. Running at full HD with a mixture of mainly low and medium settings, but a few options set at high, the game was actually very smooth. It's definitely one of the better playing games I've tested so far on the system, and it achieves it while looking pretty good too. You don't really have to sacrifice looks to get good performance here. Our first major problem came with Battlefield 5. The game would simply not run. An error message came up saying that I had to update my drivers. It's on the screen right now. However, I have the latest drivers installed. I googled it and saw a few workarounds, but they didn't work for me. A video even told me to try changing part of the registry to try to trick the game into thinking it had the right driver installed. Nothing has worked, so I couldn't test this game at all. I'm sure there's other games out there that aren't compatible with this card at the moment. I saw that the new Newer Battlefield 2042 also has this issue with this card. So that sucks. Anyway, a game that did work was Call of Duty Cold War. I don't have Vanguard, but Cold War is still relatively new and demanding, so I gave it a shot. Full HD with mostly a mix of medium and low settings once again, with a lot of effects, shadows, and other settings either disabled or just turned down really low. First try running the game with these settings, and it's probably the perfect setup for this card. FPS was always above 60, reaching the 70s at times while playing in the action-packed Nuketown. Man, it's also my first time playing Cold War in like a year, and the last time I played it was on PS4, so yes, once again, I am garbage. The performance is decent enough to have an enjoyable experience playing this game though, so I'll give this one a thumbs up. It's actually really fun to play, I kind of feel like playing it again. Since I tested Cold War, of course I had to test Warzone, but like Battlefield, I also got a little message saying that the drivers weren't installed. However, this one did allow me to continue, just warning me that there's a chance that the game may not run well. Looks like AMD has a couple things to figure out. Anyway, Warzone at full HD, once again with the settings set to low and a few features disabled, maybe a medium setting here and there. The game ran very smoothly, easily stayed above 60 FPS with the average being around 73. Now this one didn't look the best. It probably 
probably looks better in video, but once you're playing it, it doesn't look that good. But it did feel really good and smooth, and it felt like you can bump up a setting or two and it'll be just fine. I bumped up a setting, mid-game to see the difference, and graphically it looked a little better, but there was about a 10 to 15 drop in frames. Still playable at around 60 FPS in general, but not as smooth all the time. If you're just trying to get a PC to play Warzone, even if it's not going to look the best, sure, it'll work just fine for you. Now, I don't know how many of y'all are currently playing Halo Infinite, but why not test it? It is free after all on Steam. I haven't played Halo since like 2008 or something, I don't even remember which one it was. Anyway, full HD with a mixture of medium and low settings, that's a trend now, yep, just medium and low settings on this card. This game was very smooth, with a few exceptions. And I'm actually trash, I couldn't get a single kill the whole round, I just looked lost. The thing that stood out when testing Halo was the occasional stutter, and not like the split second ones. This one felt like it completely skipped a beat, and this is so far the only game that stopped working. Out of nowhere it just froze, just quit. I thought it would just be an extra long stutter, but nope, you're out. With that said, I think with a bit of fine tuning in the settings, this game would run pretty well. Most of the games, it did feel good after all, it was just those stutters. And last but not least, I tested Destiny 2. It's also free on Steam. Full HD, and I tried bumping up the settings more than on the other games, and it paid off. This game looks really good. I didn't realize this while recording the gameplay, but the screen looks a bit off like overexposed and highly saturated colors, but that's because it's my display, it automatically turned on HDR, so the screen capture kinda was thrown off. Uh, but if you look at the footage through my camera like how I actually saw it, it looks just fine. And I don't think Destiny had a single stutter, it felt really smooth the whole way through, definitely well over 60 FPS, I could've raised the settings some more, and I'm sure it would've looked even better while still running smooth. Fun game too, I got it originally back in like 2014, but never played through it, so hmm. I might play it again. Now moving away from gaming and onto noise levels, fan noise of course. If you have your case closed, you won't hear the graphics card, simple as that. Here's a comparison between the graphics card fan noise and the other fans in the case. and that was with the microphone almost inside the case. So if you have your side panels on, and you're at a reasonable distance from your PC, the 6500 XT will be virtually silent. And the Radeon software also allows you to adjust the fan curve. And it's also one of those graphics cards that doesn't turn on the fans until it reaches a certain point of heat, I guess. So if you're just browsing the web or you know doing your thing, the fans are not gonna be spinning, so they're not gonna be making any noise. But when you hop in a game and you know the things start to heat up a bit, that's when they'll turn on. But like I said, they're still quiet. Temperatures while gaming were normal for a graphics card mainly running in the mid 70s. I did overclock it a little bit and the temperature rose by maybe five degrees on average, hitting 80, 81 degrees Celsius, but the average was still in the 70s. Speaking of overclocking, the Radeon software actually allows you to bump up performance on the graphics card itself. There are a few presets, you can overclock the VRAM or the GPU, or you can select custom and max everything out like I did. There's even a built-in benchmark. I wish we knew more about what the benchmark was doing, but at least we have a timer. I guess it's testing the stability of the card after you boost it to make sure that it can stay on and not crash. And after overclocking, I played Fortnite, and we did seem to get a, a decent bump in frames. Without overclocking, our highest FPS was 82. After overclocking, our highest was 90. Now, it won't be the same for every game, but for a card at this budget with a built-in overclocking feature, feature, which still probably tends to not push the card to the max, this was pretty good. I didn't attempt to overclock it using any other methods, but I would assume that you can probably push it a little bit more. So overall thoughts, is it worth the price? Well, that's a tricky question. In today's market, sure it's worth the price. I say that mainly because nearly every other card is basically impossible to get at both a good condition and a good price. Should this be your main card? No, definitely not. If you're gonna get it, you should get it as a placeholder, and then upgrade as soon as you get the chance, whether that means lower prices, better availability, or you saved enough money to get one in the current market. But if you're planning on running this, you know, for the next year or two, I think you'll get pretty sick of its performance. You're gonna want to bump up the settings, but this card just won't allow you to. And that's the end of the video, thanks for staying till the very end. I know it's basically a movie. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below, I'm gonna try to respond to all of them, I know there's probably gonna be a lot, and make sure to leave a like. Alright guys, as always, Screw you guys, I'm going home.